Hello and welcome to the week ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 28th of June 2019 and the time has just gone 12.10 British summer time. And I'm looking ahead to next week, uh, which begins Monday the 1st of July through Friday the 5th of July. Um, before we take a look at next week, let's kind of talk about what happened in the week just uh, just gone. Um, there's been today on the 28th of June is the, is, is the first day of the G20 meeting. Uh, and tomorrow we're going to have the kind of all important uh, meeting between President Donald Trump and China's Premier Xi Jinping. And that is going to be covering the, uh, the all important topic of global trade. And this has been essentially dominating the news for the entire week. The meeting between the two sides is seen as a positive because if they're in the same room together, there's a prospect of something of the, of the relationship between the two sides improving. Um, so that's going to be in, in focus over the weekend. Uh, I don't. It's going to be difficult, given how, both, how entrenched both sides have become, uh, to, for, for a quick solution to be found. There's also a, a very much a technological aspect to it as well. Uh, it's moved away from just goods. It's moved into, into um, technology with the US uh, still having the ban in place in relation to Huawei products. Beijing are too keen about this. Um, but but no reports from Beijing in, in, in the last 24 hours, 48 hours, are saying that they wanted a balanced uh, negotiation. But given that the U.S. Uh, have concerns in relation to national security issues, the likelihood of a, of a deal being wrapped up very quickly is probably unlikely. But this meeting which will take place tomorrow might be the kind of the beginning of foundations being laid for improved imp uh, improved trading relationships between the two sides. And ultimately, um, in relation to what we see, what we could see from stock markets on Monday when they open. If there's no negative news, that is likely to be seen as a positive sign. It's only if there's a kind of a, you know relationships continue to deteriorate, and we have threats or even um, you know calls for 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 uh, uh, higher sanctions or restrictions on, uh, on rare earth minerals coming from China and the likes. In that, that kind of scenario, where we'd be there, we'd, we'd likely we'd see a sell-off in equities. But I suspect, given if we don't, if we, I suspect that as long as the news. Isn't negative, even if it's just kind of some ground was made, that will be seen as a positive, and we, and we could see equity markets push on higher from there. And the trade is also tied in with the concerns about the global economy. Um, we, we heard during the week uh, that the Fed of Reserve, a couple of Fed of Reserve members, James Bullard, who said a 50 base, a 50, uh, basis points interest rate cut would be overdone. Jerome Powell, the head of the Fed, stressed the Fed's independence, i.e., uh, pushing back at President Trump, who's been calling for lower rates, who's been calling for a, a lower lower US dollar. Uh, and Mr. Mr. Powell said that the case to loose monetary policy has has, uh, has increased, but there's still no real calls. Uh, this, this really suggests that it could be cutting rates anytime soon. What goes on in the meeting uh, between the US and China um, in relation to the trade over the weekend is likely going likely to impact uh, traders' perception of how growth is going to play out. Um, and also, looking ahead to the back end of next week, on Friday, the 5th of July, we're going to have the all-important U.S. non-farm payrolls figures. Um, keeping in mind, uh, there's all this talk about how the U.S. are going to aggressively cut interest rates uh, in, in the kind of latter half of 2019. Keep in mind, unemployment in the United States is at a 50-year low, and the wage growth rate is well above the inflation rate. So workers are getting a decent increase in real earnings, and the latest retail sales figures we've seen from the U.S., shows us that U.S. workers are happy to go out and spend money. So just keep, keep that in mind. Um, obviously, depending how the numbers come in in relation to non-farm payroll, uh, that could then alter the views in relation to are the Fed going to be heading down the path of looser monetary policy anytime soon, or is it? Or maybe traders might kind of, kind of come to the realization that maybe the, all, those feet, all those calls for low rates was a bit overdone. Also, at the beginning of next week, um, the 1st and 2nd of July, we have the OPEC and OPEC meeting with the non-OPEC members. And this is in relation to um, uh, production cuts. And th there is talk that the production cuts are going to, there is speculation that the production cuts are going to be continued. Um, but, keep, you know, but obviously keep in mind that the, uh, the, the global tensions that are going on, and the strains that are going on, there are some signs that the global economy isn't as strong as, as it was. Um, and in a scenario whereby should trade tensions between the U.S. and China deteriorate and get worse, and, and the perception is that the global economy is going to continue its slowdown, the last thing the global economy would then need was a major uh, surge in the, in the oil market and the, the price of oil, because oil 
is used across many industries. Um, and so the OPEC have to kind of balance things out between they obviously want to get a decent price for their oil to keep it relatively high, but they can't have it so high that it actually ends up actually, you know, the price goes so high it, just, it destroys demand and actually adds to the decline in global, in the global, in, in, in the global economy and in turn impacts their own demand down the line. So that's an issue we need, we need, to, be take, uh, it needs to be focused on. Uh, I'll take a look now um, at some of the kind of big, big events that are also going, to, going on uh, next week. So I mentioned the non-farm payrolls at the back end of next week, Friday the 5th of July. Uh, on the 2nd of July, we have the Reserve Bank of Australia interest rate decision. Um, on Monday the 1st of July, we have the manufacturing PMI numbers from, the, you know, from, from around the globe, from everything from, uh, from China uh, through across Europe. Um, on Wednesday, on the 3rd of July, we have the services um, numbers from, uh, from many countries around the globe. Um, on, the th on the 3rd of July, we have first quarter figures uh, from Sainsbury's here in the UK. On the 4th of July, uh, we have the um, for first full year figures from Super Supergroup, uh, Super Dry rather, Super Dry rather, the uh, the the uh, US fashion house. Obviously, the Fourth of July is a uh, national holiday in the United States, so the so US markets are, are going to be sh are going to be closed. We'll also see possibly either limited or uh, possibly trading um, on Friday as well of some markets. So keep an eye out for that. So volatility uh, towards the back end of next week could be could be low. Um, on the on um, the fifth. On Friday, the fifth of July, we have the June revenue and sales figures from International Consolidated Airline, Airlines Group, who own the likes of British Airways and Aer Lingus. And on um, on the third of July, we have the full year figures from Purple Bricks here in the UK. Now, what I'll do is I'll take a quick look at some of the major markets and see how they're panning out. We talked about global trade. What could we expect? What could we could, what could we potentially see from stock markets on Monday or early next week in light of the trade in light of the, of the uh, G20 meeting? So the, the kind of wider view for global stock markets has been basically positive throughout 2019. This year, the FTSE 100 had a sizable rally between late December and up until April. Fair enough, there's a very decent correction down through uh, early June, but the, the highs of June clearly took off the highs of May. And you can see that the FTSE 100 is comfortably above this blue line here. It's a 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 7,344. And while we hold above that metric, it's likely that the wider upward trend could continue on from here. But on the flip side, if you have a size of break below that, it could be like heading back down towards this red line, the 200 day moving average at 7,154. Uh, Dow theory tells us um, that the indices and the averages must confirm each other. So. I'll be talking about the 50-day moving average across a few uh, global stock markets. This here is the DAX over in Germany. Similar situation to the FTSE 100. Had a massive rally between late December and, uh, and early May. Sizable correction down to, down to early June, but then a, a fairly decent bounce back. Once again, while the DAX holds above its respective 50-day moving average, we're likely to see a continuation uh, of the bullish up, up, upward move. If you have a size of break below this area here, you can have the 12,000 mark that could take us back down towards the 2 moving average, which comes to play just north of 11,600. Take a look at what's going on with the um, S&P 500. A bit of a common theme here. S&P 500 had a size of rise between late December uh, up until early May. Decent correction between May and June, but obviously the highs here, uh, we, we, we went down to press, we went, went, went on to hit intraday up record highs for the S&P 500, and we're well above its 50-day moving average. And once again, while we hold above, come to be above its 50-day moving average, it's likely we could see further gains made on the S&P 500. It's only really if you kind of have a break below that, could then we be get, get a bit worried. I think, you know what, maybe the market's going to turn over itself again and press lower. Um, in relation to non-farm payrolls, we'll have a quick look at the euro dollar because that's been one of the more interesting currency charts. Um, and obviously, we've had we got a raft of both manufacturing and service numbers coming out of the eurozone next week. So the euro had a fairly sizable decline against the greenback uh, for much of 2019, but has had enjoyed a fairly decent bounce back in the last five or six weeks. We've pressed on higher. We're now trading back above, comfortably above the 200 moving average. 
which comes into play in around 113.45. If you can hold above that, it's likely we could see further gains to be made. I could be looking at targeting um, the, uh, the mid-March high. Um, and even if you do manage to kind of pull back on the euro dollar, support could come into play in around this area here, in around the 112 region. Just before I go, uh, we're obviously going to be ho we will be hosting a non-farm payrolls uh, live webinar. Uh, so please feel free to sign up for that. It can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, and then on, under uh, under events, uh, you will see the the link for the non-farm payrolls webinar. Uh, if, you, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.